So this is kind of ludicrous here, folks. Donald Trump has finally broken his silence on Alexei Navalny, who, as we know, has died at the hands, probably, of Putin, obviously. And uh, testament to that fact is that Putin, even to this point in time, has, for whatever reason, cruelty among, among the reasons, has decided not to return the body of Alexei Navalny to his wife. Probably because the toxicology is going to show that he actually killed Navalny. But Donald Trump finally broke his silence today, and he came out and he said something about the death of Alexei Navalny. And I was wondering, what is, what is he going to do? How is he going to twist this? Because Trump never wants to say anything bad about Putin, right? Never. Can never do that. God forbid. So what is he going to do? Well, folks, this is what he ended up doing. Take a look at this. This is an article that came out today uh, from Reuters, and it says, Trump breaks silence on Navalny, casts no blame on Putin. Of course. I mean, why would he do that? Why would he burn a bridge with Putin? Might need that bridge at some point. So the article says, Donald Trump, who drew criticism as U.S. president for his praise, of Russian leader Vladimir Putin on Monday made his first public comment on the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny in a social media post that cast no blame but alluded to his own legal woes. So this is how he's done it, folks. Believe it or not, Donald Trump has found a way to compare himself. He's literally found a way to compare himself to Alexei Navalny if you can imagine that, as ludicrous as it sounds. And I think it just kind of points to the continued cognitive decline of Donald Trump, who's called Nikki Haley, Nancy Pelosi, on multiple occasions. Just the other day, at a rally, he said, for God's sakes, that we're going to need ID cards to buy bread. What are you talking about, Donald Trump? An ID card to buy bread. And, and it's, it, it's just getting worse and worse, folks. On a, on a daily basis. And, and I know he's under a lot of stress, but when you compare it to Biden, there really is no comparison. Biden has made gaffes all of his life. We have that baseline. And if you had said 20 years ago that Biden is in a cognitive decline, well, by God, he wouldn't be around by now if that were the case. We just know that occasionally Biden is going to make a gap. It doesn't mean by any means that he has cognitive decline, the likes of of which Donald Trump has, folks. So here's what he said in his tweet. Donald Trump said, The sudden death of Alexei Navalny has made me more and more aware of what is happening in our country. It is a slow, steady progression with crooked, radical left politicians, prosecutors, and judges leading us down a path to destruction. Open borders, rigged elections, and grossly unfair courtroom decisions are destroying America. We are a nation in decline. A failing nation, MAGA 2024. Of course, right? So he, Donald Trump does not get the connection between why he's in the courtroom and what he's done to put himself there. He doesn't get the accountability thing, which I think alone is a sign of over-the-top narcissism, if you will, but cognitive decline, nonetheless. Donald Trump has put himself in the courtroom. When he called Braff, Brad Raffensperger in Georgia, the Secretary of State, and said, Brad, find me 11,781 votes. He doesn't understand how that would put him in a courtroom. I've got a problem with that, right? That doesn't show someone who's sane, who's thinking clearly. When you run a company and you value things based on what benefits you, that is not the sign of someone who is sane. That, that is the sign of someone who is doing something wrong, which is why Judge Engeron leveled the, the judgment that he did. But yet there's still people out there like Grant Cardone, who's bought and sold $5 billion worth of real estate, he said on Twitter, and his wife is running a pitiful GoFundMe campaign to help Donald Trump out. I mean, the guy's a billionaire and his wife is running a, a, a GoFundMe campaign. I mean, it's pitiful. And I don't think they've even cracked 50 million yet of the 355 million. I, I it's it's insane, folks. It's ridiculous. Here's a here's a billionaire that's running a GoFundMe for Donald Trump. I mean really? 
But somebody like Grant Cardone, who himself is a businessman, doesn't get the connection that you can't run a business on fluid values that change like the weather. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, it's, it's the official books and records of a company. That's what they are. You, you need to be able to rely on those and to be able to just tweak them at the level Donald Trump has done to benefit himself, as Judge Engeron has found out, is absolutely ludicrous. Nobody sees. Nobody sees them wrong. It's like, it's like the king that was not wearing any clothes, right? Nobody, everybody appeases the king. Remember that story from way back? It's like, oh my gosh, what beautiful clothing you have. My God, he's naked. You know, nobody sees that Donald Trump, I mean, there's nothing there. But the, the ultimate, I mean, in insanity to go out and compare yourself to Alexei Navalny, folks, Alexei Navalny, of all people who is fighting the massive corruption under Putin in Russia and ultimately paid the highest price for it, to compare yourself to Alexei Navalny is absolutely insane. And folks, I just want to say, you know, for the record, Donald Trump, you are no Alexei Navalny, and you never will be.